Hi, this is Keith Townsend from the virtualizedgeek.com again with another video on virtualization. In today's video, we'll be doing nested networking, VMware vSphere environment within VMware Workstation, including the networking required to run a nested VM. The image that you have before you is the lab that we'll be creating. We have an open Fowler server, so server for storage. We have a vCenter server to manage our vSphere environment, two ESXi hosts, a Windows XP host, and we'll be going with VMware best practices for creating a separate network for our virtual machines, a separate network for vMotion, a separate network for management, and a separate network for storage. So first we'll start out by reviewing the virtual machines that we've built so far. We built our vCenter server, which is a Windows 2008 server, and two ESXi hosts. We're using vSphere 5.0 and an open Fowler server. Currently, all of these servers are on a single network. And we'll walk through creating multiple NICs and placing them on the correct network. We'll take a look at our Windows machine first. In our Windows machine, we see that it's currently on a 192.168.24.166 is the current IP address. And that's on a NATed interface within VMware Workstation currently. Going back to our Visio drawing, we see that the vCenter server needs to be on the management network. So we'll designate that 192.168.24 network as our management interface. We'll go ahead and annotate that on our Visio drawing now. So we've annotated that the vCenter server is on the management network, which has an IP address of 192.168.24, which is a 24-bit subnet max. Looking at our two ESXi servers, we see our ESXi server. Currently, the management interface is on that 24 network for a host 01 and host 02 is also on that 24 subnet. Take a look at our open Fowler server. We take a look at our open Fowler server and we see our open Fowler server is on a 192.168.152 network. And we'll note that that network actually doesn't currently exist in our VMware workstation. So we'll go ahead and create that network now. In order to create a network, we're going to use the VMware Network Editor. So currently you'll notice that we have three networks, two of which that we're currently using. VM, VMNet0, which is our default bridge network. So anytime you want to access a physical machine, uh, via one of your virtual machines, you will you put that on your VMNet0 to give it a real IP address on your network. And then you can choose to NAT an IP address, which is currently what we're currently using. When we NAT an IP address, those IPs will be hidden behind the built-in firewall in VMware Workstation. So we want to add a network. And we'll call this network VMNet2. It will automatically assign an IP address to that network, but we do want to change that IP address to match our target storage network, which is 152. And we want to leave the subnet mask the same because it still is a 24-bit subnet mask. Going over a couple of the options on the screen, we can choose to set up a DHCP service on this network by default, which is how we're going to currently configure this adapter. We'll leave those settings the same. And we'll go ahead and apply those changes. And now we need to go back to our open file server. and move 
its network adapter from the default NATed IP address to our custom network we just created, which is VMNet2. So we've logged into vCenter and we're taking a look at the first host, the 192.168.24.169 host, which is our ESXi host one. And we'll take a look at the networking. And as you can see, we only have one NIC and currently both our virtual machine network and management network are connected to the default switch. So let's take an opportunity again, take a look at our Visio drawing. In our Visio drawing, again, we have our vCenter server on our management network, our ESXi servers on our management network, uh, along with the ESXi servers being on the management network, a vMotion network, uh, our storage network, and of course, a connection to the virtual machine network. So we need to create this picture within our vCenter and we'll start doing that now. The first network we'll create in our vCenter will be our storage network. In order to add our storage network, we first need to add a new NIC to each one of our hosts. You'll go ahead and hot add a NIC And remember, we already created VMNet2, which is our storage network. And I do suggest adding NICs one at a time to your ESXi host to avoid the confusion of having to have to figure out which NIC is associated with what network. So after adding the physical network adapters to our ESXi host, we'll go ahead and add that new V switch. So we'll go into V Center and add a virtual switch. We want to add a new virtual switch. And of course, this virtual switch is going to be a VM kernel. We automatically select the NIC that we've added. Choose defaults. We'll have it obtain an IP address from the DHCP. And as you see, we now have a VM kernel port and vSwitch connected to our NIC that we just added. We'll go ahead and repeat that process for our second host. So we've created the storage network for both EXSI hosts and we'll create this and we'll repeat this process to add the vMotion network. So let's spend a little bit of time talking about our virtual machine network. Here we need to make a design decision whether or not to have this network to be a network that's accessible outside of our VMware host, or if we want to have a larger lab and have that these hosts, um, these virtual guests available outside of the VMware host. If we want these networks to be available outside the VMware host, we needed to have made our management network a host only network and chose to make our virtual machine network a NATed network because VMware Workstation limits us to a single NATed virtual network. So we'll, again, we'll make this a host only network. Once created, we'll repeat that process again of adding those NIC cards to our ESXi server from VMware Workstation and we'll have our networks completely configured. So let's take a look at our final network picture. Our storage network is on the .152 subnet. Our management network is on the .24 network. 
or in that fanatic or v center server can get out to the internet and it can also get direct access to hosts that exist on our physical network our esxi servers are on the dot 138 network and our virtual machine network are on the dot 175 network let's take a look at how this looks in vcenter so in vcenter our ESXi host one, we have our management interface on a dot 24 network, our storage on the dot 152, our vMotion on the dot 138, and our vSwitch is on the dot 75. Of course, <coughs> VM networks don't have IP addresses because they don't have current VM kernels assigned to them, but we will see that when we publish a Windows XP workstation to these machines. So the first thing we want to do is add our iSCSI adapter because our open filer is running iSCSI. So we'll add an iSCSI adapter to our ESXi host in order to attach to the storage located on our open filer server. We'll put in the IP address of our open file server, which is on a dedicated network segment. And then we'll scan for volumes and adapters, data stores rather. And as you can see, there's two open file longs being shared by our EXSI hosts. So we go to 169, we can see those storage volumes, and we can see those storage volumes as well on the dot .171 machine. Take a look at our storage. We can see that the two open file data stores are listed there. So we went ahead and published a Windows XP machine to our ESXi host and now we we'll take a look at the settings we'll see that the network we're on that VM network that we created for our virtual machines we'll power up this virtual machine and see what happens so we've started our Windows XP host, and if all goes well, it should have a dot .175 IP address. So it does 192.168.75.128. And if we do an IP config all, we should see that the DHCP server is 192.168.75.254, which is the default IP address for the DHCP server of our VMware workstation. So we validated both the storage network and the virtual machine networks work. The next step is to validate that the vMotion network is working. So we'll go ahead and try attempt to vMotion our Windows XP machine from 169 to 171. We'll change the host to 171. Leave it as a high priority. And watch to see if it will transition to 171. Now, some of you may be wondering how much RAM or resources I have on my laptop. This is a laptop that we're running this lab on. I have a total of 16 gig of RAM on this laptop. And as you can see, I have, uh, this lab is currently using 11.1 gig. And processor is actually not very pegged at, as, at all. The vMotion has completed. And as you can see, we've now vMotion from 169 to 171. As the last test, we'll go ahead and ping each one of the interfaces that we've created from my VMware workstation. So first we'll ping 
the VMware hosts themselves. They are reachable. Now we'll ping our storage array. And lastly, we'll attempt to ping the VM. And lastly, we'll ping our XP workstation that's running nested in our VMware host. and we can ping that IP as well. So that concludes the lab. Thanks again for walking through another lab with virtualizedgeek.com. You can again visit our blog where you'll find this lab and many others on VMware, Zen Desktop, virtualization, and IT infrastructure in general. Thanks and have a great day.